Hey everyone, thank you. My name is Christian from Ocean Protocol. I'm going to tell you today a little bit about our protocol and how it can help to kind of to share and monetize data that's stored on storage fields like Filecoin. So what is Ocean Protocol? So it's an open source toolkit that we've created to be able to tokenize and then share the ownership and asset control to the various data assets. And so really at the core is the kind of decentralized asset registry, which uses kind of the EVM chains to kind of hold that metadata information. Then a privacy preserving framework that we've created to help connect those uh, data assets with algorithms and computing to kind of create a full end end process. So so at the core of it is our ocean data NFTs. And so what really what that allows is the ability to kind of really tokenize all the ownership and access control of these data assets. And so it follows the DID and DDO structure where the NFT address has a user to be able to have a one of one to kind of represent the decentralized identifier for a digital asset, such as a data set or an algorithm. The DDO structure then kind of describes all the information about the data set itself which may include various things such as like the access control mechanisms, who the ownership is, the description of the asset. And so as you look into here in this little high level diagram, you can be able to see that you're able to kind of apply multiple different types of information to the DDO structure, such as who is allowed to access the uh, data set, who a type of parameters are needed to be able to pull a job with it or access it, who, what kind of algorithms are allowed to run on it. And so, as you can see in the DDO, the, uh, there's all types of information about that. You can also attach license, the license information, the um, access control conditions, and as what is needed. And so, this is where it comes really powerful as for on a normal data set that is typically just a, is a, typically a link. Now you're able to attach immutable uh, proof of ownership and information about who's allowed to access it. And this can really allow for having, uh, being able to leverage all the immutability of blockchain to allow for kind of like transparent and usage of, of any data sets you have there. And so at the core, of, along with the data NFT structure, we also have kind of the, the uses of ERC-20s to allow for sharing access control to your data set. And so the reason why we've chosen to use ERC-20s is because of the ability to have flexible sub-licenses against the base IP sub there. So if you look at a data NFT, this will represent your base IP ownership of an asset, describing who, who owns it, who the owners are, who is allowed to access it. And then you can mint different ERC-20s against that to, to be able to share ownership and be able to monetize and like uh, for that. For an example, you might, un you might want to have one sub-license where someone's allowed to down only download your asset for one time or one day at one price, or you might want to allow to for kind of ongoing access at a different price. And you might, instead of like wanting to allow someone to download your asset, in which even if you have a license where it specifies they aren't allowed to, gives you the danger of them being able to kind of share and like your that their asset they purchased with other people, you may want to only allow people to run computations on your asset using your computer data framework. And so with that, you, people are allowed to kind of run algorithms they want on your asset without being able to actually download it. And so the kind of ERC-20 and sub-license model really allows for flexible access control against the same base IP asset. And so what's really interesting about, and I think powerful of like what we've done here, is by in, instead of having to recreate the entire data economy infrastructure that's needed between different stakeholders, we're actually leveraging already existing crypto standards such as NFTs and ERC-20s, which means we also get to leverage the ex existing crypto ecosystem and all the work that's going into support for that. For example, there's no need to kind of create a new method of uh, holding your access control for your stuff. You can just use existing crypto wallets like MetaMask. And so you can also just uh, go on and start to build other things. It's really such a showcase where you can start to really leverage all the already existing tools for a kind of emerging data economy. To create a data DAO, you really only need to you can leverage smart wallets and kind of existing multi-sigs to allow multiple owners on the same data NFT. You can set kind of different conditions for being able to have, share and monetize the revenue that's connected to it. You can leverage already existing things such as Etherscan to be able to monitor and have provenance of who accessed your data set, who was allowed to, and what is the full audit history of like a, an algorithm that was created from the combination of an algorithm and a data set running. 
you might be, and then from, you might be, you'll also be able to leverage the existing DeFi ecosystem, which I believe is also be extremely interesting. As for example, when you have an asset tied to that NFT that get, starts to gain revenue over time, it'll be easy to kind of plug into existing tools such as Aave to kind of be able to leverage lending products to kind of grow and, and grow your business. And here I'm going to be able to show just a little thing of like what it's like to publish an asset. And so when you kind of go through there, you kind of want to describe the metadata information that you want in your, in your asset, such as who is the owner, what's the description of the asset, and any tags to really help with the discoverability of, who you, of what you want for your asset. And then for kind of like being able to store anything that's on Filecoin or IPFS, you really just need the CID, and you kind of tokenize that to connect it there. But you can see here when you kind of are publishing it, you can be able to verify what the CID that's being used for kind of uh, for to tokenizing your asset. And this is an example of like uh, what happens when it looks like when you, when you fully tokenize an asset, then you're able to kind of have the information about it, and then others can be able to kind of purchase access to it. You can either make it for free, which kind of really allows for the provenance of who had accessed it, or for, or for a price. And this is an example kind of how, really how it looks under the hood, that when you, ha when you tokenize an asset here, not only is it just a simple link for it, you're able to have all this information tied immutable on chain of what the record is for who owns this asset, who is allowed, who is allowed to access it, what are the pr different services are tied to it, and what are any, any custom parameters you need to in order to really make full use of it. Awesome. So that's how we can talk about some of the more on the tokenizing aspect. Now I'm going to touch briefly on kind of our framework for being able to share and monetize data while still reserving privacy. So our computer data framework was created because one of the biggest problems we've had when people who want to monetize their data, they're worried about, okay, if I, if I allow someone to download my data, it's really out in the wild. Like, what can I really do to prevent that? Other, obviously, licenses can work and be able to have legal enforcement for that. However, some people really want more of a technical ability to kind of be able to share their data without having the privacy trade-offs. So that's why we able to kind of create this framework, which can be used to apply to kind of different, any different cloud computing networks whether it be centralized and soon could be more decentralized cloud computing. Really what it works, instead what a, a data owner is able to kind of on their own infrastructure, bring in the compute that someone wants to run, the algorithms to the data, run it in a private environment, and then send back just the outputs to the buyer. And so someone's able to monetize and allow others to train on their private data without losing access to the data, well, allowing the data itself to be seen. Which really helps to kind of help to eliminate kind of that trade off between um, people that want privacy of their data will also be want people that have really have max utility and like value for monetizing that data. So helping to kind of resolve that trade-off between the two really helps to allow others to really make full use of their data. Cool. So that's like kind of briefly on Ocean Protocol. And now what I want to talk about quickly is some ways that can, people in the Filecoin ecosystem can help to get involved and make use of it. And one really great use case is the Ocean Protocol data challenge that we run. So the data challenges are very similar to data science competitions in which people are, data scientists are tasked with kind of creating value on top of data sets. This is something we found that is very helpful where people that want to monetize their data, it really helps to build context around it and really helps to showcase and see the value creation on top of it as opposed to simply just making your data available and helping people understand the value and can really monetize. We have a structured competition where people, we come and help and seed potential businesses that can be built on top. And this can really range from all types and types, where it's between crypto data, between it could be IoT we've done, climate related, real estate, and more. And so one cool structure that can range from that is, for example, typically this format is we are prevented with a data set, and then you're, the participants are tasked with some type of thing to really add value, whether it be doing analysis and creating a report to kind of analyze the data and go on from there, or be able to um, like kind of build a model for kind of future predictions. For example, one thing for we've done for kind of Dubai real estate is kind of using open data from like a Dubai government. So then it really allowed people to build real, their own models for predicting rent prices and things from there. So anyone in the, in the Filecoin ecosystem that has data that they're storing there and long term on Filecoin, they really want to be able to see businesses on top that might want to be able to help to create value on top, such as if they're holding lots and lots of climate data and you want to help to kind of create a business that might be able to use it for a parent pricing parametric insurance contracts, this can be a great way to get in touch with us and we can help to kind of see and connect the different stakeholders involved between data scientists, data owners, and compute providers. And this is a quick example of the different data challenges we've had. 
And one thing we really believe by being able to tokenize the access control and kind of having on-chain revenue for a tie to these data assets is it really helped to kickstart the full data creation loop. As opposed to today, where you need to kind of have the full end-to-end -end process yourself, where you kind of get the data, curate it, clean it, then build the model, and then eventually an application, and then kind of, and then each person does not be able to, the initial people upstream do not get to take part in the downstream parts of that. You can really leverage crypto to allow to enforce kind of different royalties and be able to take part. And so you can have a sustainable value creation loop where where access to data helps to create more powerful models, which can create applications to lead into greater profits, which can then be reinvested to create to yield better data, better models, better applications. Really helping a sustainable loop and helping to kind of create a sustainable economy around open data that we believe will be coming in the future. Cool. And that's it for me. Awesome. Thank you.